traditionally not been a privileged silver tail club. It's that we've been a, 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 a team which has uh, emerged from the, the guys that worked at the tanneries on the Maribyrnong in the, in the 19th century, and, and as opposed to the, uh, the bankers who played for Melbourne. It was interesting because we were sort of always classified as a bit of a battling side. Um, whether, I don't know whether the side showed a lot of respect to us. I was drafted in 1988. Being drafted young, I stayed at home for a year and then obviously watched the club very closely over that sort of 89 year. Set myself up to start pre-season uh, for what would have been the 1990 year. Um, and within a couple of weeks, um, the club had imploded and <laughs> the merger with Fitzroy was announced. The Bulldogs are in desperate financial straits, carrying a debt of nearly $2 million. Officials discussed a merger with several clubs before adopting the Fitzroy option. I'm very pleased to announce today the, the formation of a new force in VFL football called the Fitzroy Bulldogs. We carried a million dollar debt. You think about a club carrying a million dollar debt nowadays, it's almost, well, just let's break out the champers. Haven't we had a good year to minimise it? But back then, sort of didn't look like there was any way out. We don't have the big end of town. We don't have the movers and shakers who can come in and, you know, really turn this around. It's just going to go out because, you know, little people, little battlers can't make this work. Seeing the, the players, how dejected they were, you know, seeing Dougie and all of them, you know, like, it's just so, so sad. As far as the Footscray supporters are concerned, their protests are not going to die. Their next move will be a rally on Sunday on the Western Oval, where thousands of people are expected to attend and a fundraising drive will begin. There was a huge rally here. I didn't come to the rally because I didn't even know if I was a welcome or allowed to come. I, did, I had no idea where I sat. Up yours, Oakley! Put Footscray back on the field! We have a chance to stop all over the countryside, we had people taking tins to pubs and shops and, and everybody wanted to put in. And the following year, how good we were, we got me on camera and Chris Grant. It was worth fighting for, just to have your club there, just to have the red, white and blue still on you. When the VFL issued its ultimatum that Footscray merge with Fitzroy or die, they could not have imagined the revolution that would erupt. Clearly, the Commission underestimated the power of the people. More than $1 million has been raised, and Save the Dogs chairman Peter Gordon says almost half the donations have come from outside of Footscray. Through the help of Peter Gordon in his first iteration as president, um, when the club was saved, it almost made me want to stay there even longer to basically just help resurrect it. They'd fought we had all fought so incredibly hard to make the place survive and the, the response from the population was so phenomenal that I thought to myself, I've got, to, I've got to stay involved in this just to help out. They stood up and said, we're not going to take this anymore. Um, yes, it is important that the business runs financially well, but it's more than that. It's more than a business. It actually means um, something to the psyche of the, of, the, uh, of the region. It's the region, it's the town, it's the history, it's our connection to that land. Um, and, and the precinct of the of the Witten Oval. To think that we could have raised that amount of money, I think it was one to one and a half million that we had to raise, um, and we were able to do that over a two to four week period, which is incredible. Had it not been for some pretty brave people, Peter Gordon, Irene Chatfield, Dennis Gallimberti, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Well, you don't have those people, you don't have a footy club, simple as that. <laughs>